Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload, as you can tell by the video, is going to be a video about the upcoming winter based on uh, the pattern that is occurring right now, ac across July. Now, fuck, if you recall, if you're an old viewer on this channel, which, thank you so much, um, you may be recalling from last year I did similar videos about, uh, you know, why this pattern may mean something for winter. And it was flawed to a certain extent because I used that evidence in my winter forecast to an extent which I will never do ever again. Um, you know, I was ex inexperienced, or I still am obviously, I just am a little bit more experienced now, you know, mistakes make you better. And uh, that's the only way you can improve, right? So, uh, I guess practice makes perfect, and this year I will, you know, this this does have some truth to it, this video. Um, I'll show you, I mean, see for yourself, the evidence that I present to you will be pretty uh, substantial and alarming, and it's not, I'm not the only, you know, uh, person that's noticed this. Uh, even it's uh, supported by NOAA and the Climate Prediction Center, they're thinking similar things uh, when it comes to these uh, type of patterns uh, and with the ENZO. So, without further ado, let's just get into the video start talking about this. Why this upcoming pattern may indicate a cold and possibly a snowy winter. Now again, it's very early, I agree. This is more speculation, it's for the fun of it. I enjoy doing these videos, so I don't see why not you wouldn't enjoy maybe watching this. Um, by the way, if you would like to subscribe to this channel, consider doing so. I do all sorts of weather-related content. Um, if you are new, obviously. If you are uh, already subscribed, consider liking the video, as that just really, really helps out a lot. And uh, that, that's just uh, basically the driver of this channel, so. Okay, let's get into this. Right now we're looking at historical El Nino and La Nina episodes. And uh, if you were to look at what's going on right now across the uh, ocean, it's a neutral, but it's towards the bottom half. So what I mean by that is that it's a neutral, but it's in a negative. So a neutral goes from anywhere from positive 0.5 to negative 0.5. And we are currently in that 0 to negative 0.5 uh, I guess area so notice that right now these are the average sea surface temperature anomalies during the last four weeks So this isn't how it's looking if you were to uh, just search up uh, sea surface temperatures or anomalies um, This is just for the during the past four weeks You can see it's gotten much cooler and the trend is continuing at a more faster speed than previously thought So it looks as if uh, you know, it won't be a lot you know, for maybe another month or two but come September, October, um, really November, it should start getting into a La Nina. As of now, we are in a neutral, and you can see right there, as of April, we were already in a neutral. May, we were in a neutral. June, we were in a neutral. Now, July and August are still under question mark, but they most likely will still be a neutral, and then a La Nina will form. Let's look at the models and see uh, what I'm, uh, see, uh, show you guys what I'm saying. Okay. So, this is where the thing may go wrong, where my prediction about this, uh, I guess this evidence is a little bit possibly flawed. So notice that the Enzo neutral is most likely to continue through Northern Hemisphere summer 2020. So most through August, it should be neutral Enzo. And uh, with roughly equal chance of Enzo neutral or La Nina beginning in August through October. So that's the big question. What will it be? Will it be a neutral or will it be a La Nina in the fall and winter? Now, as you can see by these bar graphs, they are pretty dark aren't tied out. I mean, it's even as can be. And that's a nightmare because uh, it's so far out. It's such a uh, changeable... I mean, so little, you know, a little uh, variation in the atmosphere could change this very uh, greatly. And uh, notice that October, November, December, it's a 50-50 or, you know, the same equal chances for a La Nina and a neutral. But El Nino, it's fair to say, is basically out of the question. At this point, it's basically out of the question. It's not going to most likely be an El Nino. So it's neutral or La Nina. Notice, let's look at the models. They are, you know, El Nino, only two are showing an El Nino, which are, they're just off in many ways, and I can make a separate video about that. But notice that uh, we, uh, this is where the El, uh, La Nina starts, is this line. We have quite a few models, even some of the bigger, uh, the, uh, the average and a statistical average, the DOIN average and a statistical average, are both showing uh, El, El Nino or El La Nina at some point in time, or a very, very, very negative, a neutral, basically as much as it gets, you know, a, ne a negative 0.4. So, uh, it's either between a, you know, it's going to be on a border between a La Nina and a neutral. It's not really going to be in the middle of a neutral, you know, it's not going to be 0.0. .0. 
Yeah, I mean, there's very few models that are showing that. It's towards the lower bottom partial of this uh, graph right here, and you can see that there are a few models that are showing that, and then there's a bunch of spaghetti models that are showing a very strong La Nina, uh, or as, you know, some models are showing a strong La Nina, and there's quite a bit that are just showing La Nina. So, but you can see, they're not really sure either. Most models predict Enzo Neutral or La Nina during the remainder of 2020, and it's really depending on what's going to happen in the next few months of this occurrence. Now, uh, if you were to look at the Weather Channel, they are pretty confident in a La Nina forming. Uh, so is the Climate Prediction Center. Uh, they, they, they are thinking that La Nina is more likely to form than a neutral. Let's look at the CFS um, models. It's kind of a whole new group of models, and this is uh, these models are uh, all definitely more trending towards the La Nina. Notice this is the La Nina line right there, okay. and if you were to look at the uh, right there, that's where the La Nina line is, and you can see during November, December, February, almost all models are below that, and the average, uh, you kind of like the in between, you know, the statistical average of all the models is running well into La Nina territory. So. Uh, at some point, these, it looks as if this will be a solid La Nina. And these models are way more confident, this model group, than this model group. Which uh, is, I guess, a good thing, since they're showing more of a La Nina. You know, I guess they're showing they're, they're more confident, but it's not necessarily it's still 100% accurate. So if you were to look now at uh, some of the previous years of La Ninas, and, you, you know, 2008 was a... If you were to look at the 2007-2008, which it just cuts off at 2008, if this were to show 2007, we had a bunch of, uh, we had a neutral going into a La Nina winter, which is what we have this year, possibly. Now, uh, the next average, or the next La Nina uh, year that we had was, uh, similar to this year, was a 2016-2017. Uh, Notice, neutral, or El Nino, like we had this year, neutral, and then a La Nina into the winter months. Okay. And you can see that it stretches out. So... You may be wondering why am I not doing, say, 2011 or 10 to 2010 with these La Ninas. These La Ninas were a bit too strong to compare them to this year. And that's the thing right there. You can see that it's if it's just a bit too strong, the La Nina, then it's, it goes in a whole different category. And that's called the strong or weak or moderate strong, moderate to strong La Ninas. And they have a different impact than what a weak La Nina does. It's not necessarily more amplified, uh, you know, just version of the weak La Nina's, the impacts. It's, it's, it could be a completely whole different array of impacts. And notice that we have, we have basically a, a setup um, from 2010 to 2011 that's not really like this year's. So let's take a look at uh, the bunch of, La you know, I went on this website. It's a great website. It's ggweather.com. And it says it just has La Nina, El Nino and La Nina years and intensities. And if you were to look at this, we have them all segregated into weak, moderate, and strong. And into a lot, uh, El Nino, we also have weak, moderate, strong, and very strong. So uh, let's take a look at this now. Um, we're focusing on this chart right here, weak, because that's most likely what will be this year. Because, you know, it's that be in between between a neutral or a La Nina. And if it La Nina does form, it most likely will stay in a weak sector rather than the moderate sector. I'm pretty sure, uh, yeah, I am sure, the weak uh, category is anywhere from 0.5 to 0.9 of a La Nina. Um, it may get into moderate category, uh, the La Nina this year, if things go absolutely, you know, as well as it can for the La Nina, but most likely it will stay in a weak, if at all, you know, it may just end up being a, a, a neutral, but at this point it seems like a weak La Nina is more likely. And some other, you know, again, forecast agencies are also uh, confident, more confident in that as well. So not just me being biased here. It's based on the recent trends, as I showed you at the beginning of this video, with the with the anomalies of the sea surface temperatures. This isn't, you know, the actual anomalies. Um, this is the for, for the past four weeks. You can see it's been much cooler. It's been cooling off. These are the actual anomalies. I'm pretty sure. Uh, well, no, no, no. These are also the sea surface temperature departures. You could see similar story. And uh, now, if you were to look at the, uh, I wanted to show you the years. So you could see we have all these weak years, and I didn't just take every single one of them and just put them in a composite. Basically, what I did is, you know, I looked at them. So say 2000 to 2001. It's a leak, uh, weak La Nina, but the reason I didn't choose it is because look, most of the early year, which it starts at July. I think this is July or June. This is yeah, July. So where we are in right now for 2000 to 2001 was already a La Nina, which this year is not the case. And it was a, a strong La Nina for this year, so I couldn't use that. You know, it was weak here, so I could have used that, but it already was a La Nina going into a weaker La Nina. We're at an El Nino going into a neutral, going into a La Nina, which is slightly different than what we have here. So I didn't really use this year, even if it was a weak La Nina. I used many other years, like, the, you know, 83 to 84. Uh, let's find that quickly right here. You can see, started off neutral, went into a La Nina. And then um, it went back out into neutral, which definitely could be the case for this year. 
So uh, I want to show you now the composites of what could happen if a La Nina pattern like this sets up. So I wanted to start off by showing you what those years that had the weak La Nina, what that summer looked like. So it's kind of uh, like w what we are in right now, the July of those years that were, they were La Ninas. So, um, you know, if we were to, uh, you know, it was the years of 2005 to 2006 winter, which was a La Nina. 2007, 2008 was actually La Nina. This is the July kind of preceding that winter of La Nina. And we, they were in the same stage that we are in right now, at about the same Enzo stage. Notice what the July uh, temperatures were. Above average for much of the U.S., including the northern parts, where this case, um, this case scenario, uh, this year, is much very similar. We have warmer temperatures across much of the, uh, the northern U.S., including parts of Canada and of course it's going to vary a bit but the general uh, you know theme is that it's warm it's going to be it's it was warm and that's what the La Nina summers uh, a La Nina's with uh, a you know that's what July's with La Nina's looked like uh, very very warm and if we were to look now at the uh, at the years that followed this uh, or uh, at the months that followed this and at the different categories like rain and precip and these are the winters that followed the La Nina you could see that you know, the summer was warm, July was warm, just like this year, and by the way, if you didn't uh, know, it's it's going to be very warm. This July, is, I already made a couple of videos about that. This upcoming July is very warm, going to be very hot, very hot, and that's why the, uh, this uh, weather pattern that we have right here across all these summers that have had a very cold uh, or had a very uh, typical Enzo or a very similar Enzo pattern that we have this year, you know, the summers are very similar to what we're going to have this year and we already have setting up. So notice this is the winter that followed. You could see it was remarkably different. It was warmer across the south, but very cold across the north into parts of the northeast and into parts of the upper plains and especially across the northwest. So very cold, even across California. Um, these were just remarkably cold temperatures. And now let's uh, take a look at, you know, so that's basically why this winter could be cold. Um, if if uh, it's similar, if it plays out the way it's supposed to. So basically what we need is the, uh, the uh, you know, the current neutral to turn into a La Nina during this fall and uh, with July being warm we have every uh, evidence showing pointing towards it could be a similar winter like one of these years we had a very similar set Enzo setup so I don't see why not we can't see a, a cold winter again like this and now let's take a look at the precipitation of the same years you can see it was above average for much of the northern US especially the west and parts of the northeast so possibly large snowstorms large snow systems a bit below average across the south that still doesn't mean they couldn't have gotten some snow systems but generally you could see quite a bit of chilly cold air across the northern US or sorry quite a bit of uh, above average precipitation Aligned with cold air could mean a, quite a bit of a cold and snow, obviously. So if we were to, I wanted to show you, I think that's it, yeah, that's all I wanted to show you guys. Oh yeah, also, uh, I went back a little bit uh, further to the, you know, I showed you the warm July, and I wanted to see what happened before this warm July. Was it similar to this year? Um, and remember, we had a very cold April to May time frame. Look at this, all these years have a very cold April to May time frame as well. So even more evidence to show you that this year belongs in these these years categories. So uh, very remarkable evidence that I found and I wanted to share it with you. So this is definitely something that's very interesting and everything agrees with it. So does that necessarily mean that a cold winter is coming? No, but it's a, it's a you know, this is kind of a, I guess, a, a, a good sign that something may be brewing and uh, the reason as to why it may be cold if it if it is cold so um thank you guys so much for watching consider liking the video consider subscribing to the channel i'll catch you all guys on the next episode see ya bye